If you're a fan of RuPaul's Drag Race, you are likely familiar with this guy. His name is Carson Kressley, who currently is a rotating judge on the show alongside comedian Ross Matthews. And I remember the first time I showed Drag Race to my mom, she recognized Carson instantly, telling me that he used to be part of a show called Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, and at the time, I didn't know what that was. The original Queer Eye series premiered on Bravo in 2003, and it featured a group of gay men called the Fab Five who each specialized in a different aspect that would lend itself to a total makeover for a straight man, like fashion and hair, as well as some more niche stuff like food and wine, interior design, and culture. The show was pretty successful, even winning a Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Reality Program in 2004. I'd argue that Queer Eye and to some extent What Not To Wear, its mean-spirited cousin that also started airing in 2003, paved the way for the queer makeover show genre, which has more modern day examples than you'd think it would. HBO's Were Here, Dragnificent on TLC, even Trixie Motel to some extent, contain a lot of the tropes that the original Queer Eye had, in which gay people share their culture, wisdom, and perspective with people from various communities who are less than familiar with them, to show that we are, you know, not all so different after all. Queer Eye also got its very own reboot in 2018. Fun fact, I actually met the Queer Eye guys the year the show started because they were promoting the series during a talk show that I was working on at the time. They are all nice people generally speaking, at least to me. Netflix's reboot for Queer Eye at first glance is really cute. It captures the spirit of the original with the same range of experts that make up the Fab Five, including Tan France, who handles style and wardrobe, Anthony Porowski, who is the food and wine aficionado, Bobby Burke, who does the interior design, Karama Brown, who is the culture and lifestyle expert, but it's a long-running meme that he kind of just ends up being everybody's therapist or motivational speaker. And finally, we have Jonathan Van Ness, who is in charge of grooming, makeup, and personal care, and many view them as the heart of the show. For the record, Jonathan Van Ness is non-binary, but uses any pronouns. I haven't seen every episode of the show, but it's good to put on if you want an easy watch, maybe something cozy that'll make you a little emotional. The banter between the guys is fun, although a lot of the episodes are spent apart while they all complete their individual tasks for their makeover subjects. A long-running meme is that Bobby Burke has a lot of disproportionate work to do over the others because he has to remodel a whole house while Anthony, you know, teaches somebody how to make a quiche. Part of what makes Queer Eye work as a show is that you have to believe the chemistry between all of the guys because we all know how badly things can go when you make it obvious that they, you know, at one point were all total strangers who were cast together for the purposes of a TV show. This is obviously the case with Queer Eye, but they seem like friends, and at the very least, Netflix has provided an elaborate psyop into making us believe that they're all companions by making them do all of the internet-friendly PR series that, you know, we all expect them to do. OMG, Karamo, you're so wise. Let me buy you your Bible somewhere, please. Let me buy your Bible somewhere, please. I've never seen it spelled P-L-I-Z. Me either. Um, but no, balayage is great when you need a little balayage moment. Oh, you used huh? to balay ali 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 I balayage, yeah, I used oh. to balayage Bobby's hair. Ashley, no, all you? of y'all need to stop. No one is going to put a duvet or a poncho on. You it's not you. You're I always cold. You live you in a poncho one. duvet. You would love yeah, that. You're, you're always you cold. But earlier this month, it was announced that the Fab Five is no more because Bobby Burke is departing the show. Burke will appear in season eight, which is going to air pretty soon, but I'm guessing they will probably recast him if Queer Eye gets renewed for a future series. Burke wrote the following statement on Twitter regarding his departure. It's with a heavy heart that I announced that season eight will be my final season on Queer Eye. It's not been an easy decision to be at peace with, but a necessary one. Although my journey with Queer Eye is over, my journey with you is not. You will be seeing more of me very soon. Now this seems straightforward enough, but it also doesn't sound entirely like it was normal or an amicable or natural split. Depending on whether or not you want to see drama here, you can read too much or too little into this statement. But after this announcement, the speculation started coming. Now the first seed of doubt in the press came by way of Us Weekly, where a source claimed to the outlet that Bobby left because, quote, there were many challenges with scheduling and there was a loss of interest from Bobby filming the show. The network and the cast thought it was time to bring in fresh blood, his heart was not in it, and the rest of the cast started to resent him because of that. However, a second source in that same article was quoted as saying that there was no drama with the cast and that this decision was amicable. So at this point, it's more of a he said, she said, they said story. And I wouldn't be making this video if that speculation simply ended here. But there's a little more of the story we have to get through. 
The more hardcore speculation really started after reports that Bobby Burke unfollowed Anthony and Tan on social media, although it appears that he is still following Karamo and Jonathan Van Ness. Now sure, that's some typical celebrity drama non-drama, but additionally, Karamo says that he, JVN, and Bobby were not invited to Anthony's bachelor party, implying that there may be some sort of falling out between the five of them. Again, this is all speculation, but that speculation is not good for Netflix because, as I said earlier, the show only really works if there's a level of chemistry there that is believable. It doesn't have to be genuine necessarily, I mean, I'm pretty sure the guys from Mythbusters really didn't like each other and that show still got on for a while. And I would assume the producers will probably do a decent job of not letting all of this bleed into the final product of the show, but it does kill the magic a little bit if we're being real here, because Queer Eye has such a wholesome image and I guess I would just prefer it to stay that way because let's be real, the world is a nasty, ugly place and we're naturally conditioned, especially on social media, to look for the tea and the drama and everything, and it does get a little exhausting. And the rumor mill continued to push along with the release of several TikToks by someone who claims to have been around one of the cast members while all this drama was going down initially. My friend dated one of the guys from Queer Eye. So when Bobby announced that he was leaving the show, I was not surprised at all. He queer that my friend, <laughs> that my friend was dating from the cast was not shy about talking about any of the cast drama in front of us. It was a little bit surprising hearing all these stories though, because the way that he described his castmates is so different than the way that they appear to be on TV. For example, one of the cast members was reported to HR by another cast member for relentless sexual harassment. He was basically saying that they all kind of hated each other, but more specifically, that they all hated Jonathan. The worst part is this was at like this cast member's like pool party, so he had all his sort of like hanger on type friends there who were like hardcore sucking his dick. And all his friends were like, oh, you're the most famous one on the show for sure. Like they were comparing people's status on the show. And I'm just like sitting there sipping my cocktail thinking, baby, Jonathan Van Ness, JVN is the breakout star of this show. There is no competition. How did you get this delusional? While I do completely believe what he was saying about the essay, I don't know if I believe everything that he was saying because he honestly was so different than the character that he portrays to be on television. Like... He and my friend, he's a former friend, that's why I feel comfortable sharing this story, but like, they would go on these like full on multi-day drug benders, orgies, would get into fights and like blackmail each other, which is like so opposite of who this person portrays himself to be. Okay, so even this guy says that the conversation he was reportedly privy to may be a little dramatized, and considering all we know about this demographic and the environment where this discussion allegedly took place, I'd say yeah, that's probably correct. As far as which guy this is, a lot of people in the comments are speculating that it's either Antony or Karamo, and most people believe it's Karamo because the creator in this video mentions a pool party, and Karamo has a pool, and apparently loves pool parties, and he's not married like some of his other co-stars. Additionally, JVN and Antony have a business together, which theoretically rules them out as well, or at least makes it less likely that it was Antony. I also just think it's funny that when this first dropped, nobody thought it was Tan. Everybody was like, yeah, Tan is definitely above this shit, it's definitely not him. I also sort of went down a rabbit hole of people who have claimed to have worked with or met the Queer Eye cast at one point or another, and a lot of them are like, oh, JVN is not a good person, or ooh, Karamo's really shady to work with, and then all of the replies to those posts are like, oh no, I had great experiences with both of them, but Bobby was really standoffish and weird. This kind of thing happens a lot with famous people, and I can say that as someone who is in the vicinity of famous people pretty regularly, like, it's pretty common for them to have good and bad days, or be exhausted, especially if they're on a big promo tour or something, especially if they're on a set early in the morning. They're not robots, you know, they're people. But what's being described here is a little more sinister and dramatic, like tales of blackmail and alliances. And I don't know, I guess I just have a hard time believing it, but also I don't know these guys in real life. None of us do. And I guess it also just sucks that people are so eager to cast blame on one person or hyper fixate on aspects of parasocial dynamics when at the end of the day, none of us really know shit. It reminds me a lot of when the We're Here cast had a big shakeup and now people speculated that this season they brought on Latrice to replace Jada because Jada was apparently difficult to work with. And from what I remember, that whole controversy was giving very source, I made it up. 
But whatever, I guess I'm not telling you you can't ethically enjoy this next season of Queer Eye. Sometimes famous people are just messy, sometimes regular people are just messy, and sometimes you just don't get along with your coworkers. But it does become a little more painful and almost existential when it's your job to have chemistry with them for millions of people to watch, and a handful of those people know you're faking it. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I'm in the process of a light rebrand for the channel in 2024. I'm working on a new mini set with Brian in our apartment, here's a sneak peek, and I'm going to be doing a few new headshots, putting together a link tree, all kinds of fun business stuff, so bear with me off camera for a little bit while I figure that out. Who's your favorite Queer Eye cast member, and what's your most notable celebrity interaction? One of my personal favorites was the time I got Derek Huff a bagel and a coffee because he was really nice to me. Have a good night everyone, and I'll see you next time.